What's up, kings and queens? Welcome back to The Aya Show. I am Tiffany Roldan Howell, and I have a very special guest, Super Bowl champion and actor, Sonoris Moss. And we are gonna be talking all things mindset. So, stay tuned. Thank you guys for joining us, and thank you, Sonoris, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And so I wanted to have Sonoris on the show because I wanted to basically go over the importance of mindset because he is very talented. I'm talking athletic. He is a singer on the low um, <laughs> and he's also an actor. And so mindset plays a really important role in all of those areas. And I wanted to just kind of sit down with you and bring this to the viewers at home. So mm -hmm. I wanted to start <laughs> off with you know, the fact, like I mentioned, you have all these different areas, all these different talents, mm -hmm. right? So somebody who is very multifaceted like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Starting off, what did you want to be when you grew up? Every, everything, <laughs> really. Really? Um, I think at a young age, I discovered that I was capable of doing quite a few different things. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing was probably me running really, really fast. <laughs> That was like one of the first things. I was like, hold on, my speed is a lot different than everybody else's. Mm. Um, and then, you know, playing with my brother, my oldest brother, and, and my youngest brother as well, and just running around the neighborhood. And then I discovered that I had the gift to actually like hold a note and sing, maybe in like third or fourth grade. Mm. Um, my mom and myself, we were singing all the time in the car. Mm. So um, I think when I got to school one day, I was like in music class in elementary school, mm -hmm. and we were singing notes, and I held a note, and everybody looked back like, Yo, you sound good. Mm -hmm. So, and that took off from there, you know, from for myself. But yeah, I wanted to be everything. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a model. I wanted to play football. I wanted to sing. I just wanted to be a part of anything that I could be, you know, be a part of when I was younger. And that's crazy because you've done a lot of those things. So yeah. how does actually let's let's talk about that? How does mm -hmm. that feel to be able to look back and be like, you know what? I grew up wanting to be all these things, and I'm actually like checking those boxes off. Yeah, um, I, I think it's it comes down to like manifesting those things mm. I, mean, I think for myself personally at a young age i had a lot of confidence in knowing what i wanted to be mm -hmm. and what i wanted to be a part of and i really stood on top of that like i would tell my mom i want to do this or I'd tell my dad i want to be a part of this and mm -hmm. they would make it happen you know and i would go and put in 110 percent to do those particular things mm -hmm. and as time went on playing sports being athletic hey i want to play football playing with my brothers around the neighborhood, seeing my brother, my oldest brother ahead of me playing football as well. Mm -hmm. And I was just constantly pursuing that, you know, that gift that we were blessed with to play the, right. the game, you know, the game of football and then actually being successful in that. Right. And then it's like, okay, I also want to do this. You know, I also want to sing. I also want to model. And that's, yeah, it's like and those I think ands, yeah. That's so cool because mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's one or the other. Right. Put an and there. You don't have mm -hmm. to, it's not an or. <laughs> right, exactly. It's not. So not you manifested all of this. Mm -hmm. And when you, how did you kind of like keep that confidence and keep that focus when there's so many other distractions going around? Mm, that's a, that's a good question. That's a great question, actually. Um, I think for me, honing on and knowing like, okay, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I have to become disciplined in that and finding that discipline and just doing <laughs> everything I need to do in order to be successful in whatever field I, I chose. That's all um, far as playing sports, I knew that I had to practice every day, mm. you know, and I know with practice is progression. Mm -hmm. I will eventually get better at whatever skill set that I have and running track and doing all these different things. So I think over the years and even at a, at a very, very young age, mm -hmm. becoming aware of what I was capable of doing, that gave me a lot of confidence, you know, mm -hmm. um, winning certain races or racing against guys in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It gave me confidence to say like, okay, I can really, really do this, you know, mm -hmm. or I can go far with this as well. And then also having an older brother who was very athletic as well, you know, playing football, running track and seeing him succeed also gave me the confidence to say, like, if my brother can do it, I know that I can do it, too. And you know what's crazy is I've actually heard a story. Tell me if this is true. Mm -hmm. Did you guys used to race the cars? Yeah. On yeah, 90, yeah, like, yeah, we did. <laughs> that is really yeah, crazy. Like, we did. So. <laughs> so like on 95, the mm -hmm. story is that they would literally race the cars that were going onto the highway. So that is Really awesome. And how old were you guys when you I mean, were doing we were that? Boy. We were little boys. Right. I mean, talking about maybe third or fourth grade, eventually when we got to, yeah. So mm -hmm. third or fourth grade, I mean, starting at the at the stop sign and we see a car come off and we just race them as they go into the on-ramp. 
And that's crazy because I'm sure right then and there you're probably like, oh yeah, not many people could do this. <laughs> I mean, exactly. exactly. It was, it was, I mean, it was fun for us to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, as as kids, not even really thinking. Not thinking. You know, not right. even really thinking. Just going after this, just having fun. So, for us, it was just a great thing to do. That's so awesome. Okay, so you played professional football for mm -hmm. seven years. Yes. In the NFL. Obviously, we talked about how you had to have that mindset growing up and how mm -hmm. you had to focus, manifest, hone in on that. But in the NFL, how, obviously it's important, but how did you guys focus on mindset in the NFL? And I think for me, by the time I did get to the NFL, I, I didn't, I won't say that I mastered, you know, having a certain mindset, but I was pretty, I had habits of, you know, doing things a certain way, mm -hmm. um, you know, building myself up. Waking up early in the morning, you know, going to going to work out, going to school, going to class, going to practice, mm -hmm. and knowing that that worked for me in college. Mm -hmm. and then eventually, when I got to the NFL, still having that discipline and also that determination to say, "Hey, I'm here, but I also still have to work to maintain where I am." Um, and it's a lot of different things that come, you know, when playing professional sports, or playing sports. Period. You face a lot of adversity. You right. know, you face you face different things where you get injured. Um, so you also have to really change, I won't say change your mindset, but be in a place of having a perspective to say like, hey, I'm in a place where I can't do as much right now. Mm -hmm. um, let me get myself better. And then so I could be able to move forward and progress in that. So it's so important to have, I think, a positive outlook on life itself. Mm -hmm. um, I know we are faced with so many different things that could bring us down mentally, um, but it's important to have that positive outlook. It's important to always be um, have that perspective of knowing that, okay, where I'm at, better is right around the corner, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think for me, that was something that always kept me moving forward in everything that I did, no matter what I faced, no matter what is going on around me, I knew that, hey, better is coming, so. You guys hear that? Better is coming, <laughs> okay? And so let's talk about that though, because you, you built this routine, mm -hmm. and how old were you when you were in the NFL? Um, I was 22 years old when I got drafted. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So you built this routine while you were in college and going to class, you know. Now you're an actor, which is completely different, mm -hmm. right? At, at a, uh, sort of. Really? Okay. Sort of, yeah. So, th please. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I, mean, um, I was like, please I, elaborate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it, it takes the same discipline and determination mm. as, as an athlete, mm -hmm. you know, and also to be an actor. Um, I think for myself, I am grateful that I being able to experience the things that I experienced while playing sports or being a part of sports, mm -hmm. that gave me the work ethic, you know, that gave me the discipline mm -hmm. and knowing what I had to do for myself to now make that transition over to what I'm doing now as an actor mm -hmm. and still having that same determination, that same discipline and waking up, going to classes, you know, sitting mm -hmm. down, breaking down the script, um, applying myself because in order to get these roles, I have to apply myself, right. you know, so I have to work on my gift. Um, so it's very, very important. I think for me, when I did make that transition, I had that same attitude. It's like, hey, I'm gonna wake up, I'm about to get this. Like, you know, that was the mentality, like, I gotta get this. And you can use that mentality in, in any anything, field. In any field. <laughs> In any field, you really right? Because it's self. It's the self discipline. It's mm -hmm. the self talk. It's the self discipline. It's right. the mindset mm -hmm. that you have to have in order for you to be successful in whatever you're doing. Yeah, but but honestly, believing that you can do it. I think a lot of times we as human beings we say things mm -hmm. that we want to accomplish and we say things that we want to do, but the missing factor is believing that we actually can do those particular things. Mm -hmm. So I think when you do honestly believe in yourself and know that hey. I can accomplish this thing. Mm -hmm. That's when it all happens. Right. That's true. Because you can you can do all the work, but if you don't believe in yourself, you're gonna self sabotage yourself, and you won't even notice. Exactly. So continuing on from like being an actor and mm -hmm. mindset and stuff, when you are an actor and you're having to embody this completely fictional character, <laughs> right? How do you? prepare your mindset so that way it or protect I should say mm -hmm. your mindset so that way it doesn't like blur the lines between your personal identity and the character that you're portraying mm. um, I, I, honestly going into you know it's, it's such a, a beautiful exercise um, you know discovering who this character may be whoever you know whatever role that you book mm -hmm. so now honing in and trying to get the backstory of who this guy is or where this person is from um, what makes him him, 
you mm -hmm. know, um, for myself and just breaking down and finding the essence between who this character is and who this person is. And then obviously mastering that and being able to portray it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a part of each character, I think, in us, some, some way deep inside of us. Mm -hmm. um, and us being able to tap into that and bring that out. Um, and that's art, you know, that's the beauty of art, you know, being able to discover that. But also, like you said, having the mindset to not get caught up and overwhelmed and, and, overwhelmed yeah. and like, okay, okay, this is me, this is, and being able to tap into that, film it, but also be able to bring yourself out of it. And for some people, they can, and for some individuals, they can't right away. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a practice. It's something that you constantly do daily, you know? Um, and I think for myself personally, I've been able to tap into, you know, the realms of I played a role as a pastor. Mm. You know, I played a role as, you know, the, the, the boyfriend or the heartthrob, or mm -hmm. I played a role as someone who was locked up and, and dealing with, you know, the battle of the prison system and being able to tap into that realm of like, what would that experience be for me? But what was that experience for this person? Mm -hmm. Why did he get to this place? What mm -hmm. made him land into this prison system and being able to tap into and bring that out, mm -hmm. but also bring myself up out of it. Are there any um, like self-care practices that you keep for yourself that you do like consistently? Um, I mean, therapy for myself. Um, yeah, I for sure. love that. For sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love that because there is such a stigma against therapy. It is. And I just, in this world that we're living in, there is mm -hmm. a lot of things that we are dealing with every single day and people don't recognize the importance of just being able to take 30 minutes to an hour to just release it. Right. And that's what therapy allows you to do. Like, it definitely does. So how long have you been going to therapy? Um, late 2017 is when I started. Um, it was something for me that um, I didn't think I actually really needed. Mm -hmm. But um, once I discovered that I had the opportunity to you know, meet with a therapist and sit down and and really dive into some things that I was, you know, battling with. Mm -hmm. And it was tremendously helpful for me moving forward and, and pinpointing some things that I needed to work through for myself. Um, so I recommend it for anyone, you know, even if you don't think you have it, go and speak to someone. I mean, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if you don't want to go to therapy, you can use, you know, yoga, mm -hmm. you can do Reiki, mm -hmm. whatever meditation practices that you think you feel comfortable doing. I think I encourage everyone to do it and be a part of it some type of way. And I love that you said, because I was actually going to say it, but you said it for me. You might think you don't need it, mm -hmm. but you don't understand how beneficial it is until you actually do it. And you're like, oh, I didn't even know I was holding all of this yeah. in, you yeah. know? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it was times where I was like, yeah, I didn't realize that I was holding this in for something that happened, you know, multiple years ago, mm -hmm. you know, but it's a thought when we start speaking about it, it's like, okay, why am I this way? Mm -hmm. Why do I react to certain things this way? Mm -hmm. Why do I react to certain people this way? And that's all because of things that we either holding in mm -hmm. and we finally get a chance to release and let it out. It's internal, man. That mm -hmm. internal work is serious. Yeah, it's, it's extremely serious. And it's funny because you're talking about, like we talked about self-discipline and self-talk mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but when you're doing that inner work, mm -hmm. like realizing that we are all works in progress. Right. At all times. Nobody's perfect. perfect. Nobody. <laughs> no, at not even all. Super Bowl champions. <laughs> <At all. laughs> we're, we're not perfect at all. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it was tremendously helpful for myself, like I said, um, mm -hmm. to really dive into those, you know, those particular areas that I didn't know, that I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was something that I've just been holding in for so long and probably, you know, conditioned myself to overlook it. Mm -hmm. or to just move past it and say, you know what, I'm good, so let me just move past it. And um, actually, I probably wasn't good, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, it's very beneficial. And this, and especially just, I feel like that was like our upbringing, right? The, the upbringing is, and that's something else. It's like being positive, having a positive mindset mm -hmm. doesn't mean not feeling your emotions. Oh yeah, we feel them. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean overlooking. Oh, yeah. That's depression. Right. It's not exactly. positive thinking. Exactly. You know, Very, so. very, very aware of the things that um, I've overcame mm -hmm. very well the things that probably broke my heart or hurt me to a point where I knew that when I went into this therapy session, I was able to open up, have an open mind, have an open mind about it and just be free of it, my thoughts and say, hey, this is what I experienced. This mm -hmm. is why I feel this way. Um, I know this is why I do this mm -hmm. particular thing, you know what I'm saying? And, and just being in a place of like, hey, and releasing it. That's what it is. It is. It's being in a place of being open minded and being able to release mm -hmm those things you know do you meditate as well yeah I do meditation I yoga 
Yeah. I love I, it. I do it all. Especially living in California. I mean, that's what, that's, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what Californians that's, do. That's what people do in California. I mean, but it's, but it's helpful, though. It's beneficial. Yeah, you know, no. it's not just like, you know, I'm following a trend. Let me just go meditate because everybody else is doing. But mm-hmm. when you finally realize, like, okay, this has been official for me. The reason why they're the doing it. The reason why they're doing it. You're like, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I want more of this. You know? Dude. So, yeah. When quarantine first started, Mm -hmm. that was something that I did for myself. I was like, okay, I'm going to be home for who knows how long. Let me take up something. Mm -hmm. With this extra, the the driving time that I normally would have, what am I going to do with this time? Mm -hmm. And I inputted yoga, life-changing. Because I'm all about breath work. I love meditation. Mm -hmm. I love breath work. But I didn't know what yoga was. Mm -hmm. I always kind of, and that's just something for me. Like, that's just a stereotype I had. I was like, yeah, people in California do it. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I'm, but I'm not going to do yoga. Mm-hmm. And it is very life-changing because yeah. it teaches you breath work. It teaches you time to be with yourself. Yeah. And on top of that, you're also kind of working out. And, mm-hmm. and it's not easy. It's, it's not a easy challenge. It's a challenge yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's like so many, it, it helps in so many areas. So I'm really mm-hmm. happy that you do that. And um, I really encourage you guys to try yoga, Reiki. I said that wrong. Reiki. Reiki. Mm-hmm. I haven't gone to Reiki yet, but mm-hmm. I actually have a friend who's doing that. How, have, oh, nice. How was your experience with Reiki? It was nice. Yeah? yeah. I have to do more research on it, but I have a friend who does it, and mm-hmm. she's going to do. She's gonna introduce me to it yeah. the right Go way. It. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Um, so I wanted... It's funny because we were talking about... Um, you know, the fact that you had that support from your family Mm -hmm. when you were growing up. And one of my followers actually messaged me yesterday. Mm. We've already had this pre-planned, but I think this was so perfect that it came in. Um, She said that she has an 18-year-old son Mm. and he wants to be a professional athlete. Nice. However, she's trying to push him. um, And however, everyone around him is giving him more of like the negative energy. Oh, mm-hmm. it's one in a million chance that you're going to mm-hmm. go. You know, um, you need to have a plan B. You need to, you know, do that. What advice do you have for people who have this dream in their heart but may not have the support that you had when you were younger? Great question. Um, go after it. Just do I it. I mean, use it, <laughs> use it as motivation. I mean, use that negativity as motivation mm-hmm. to, to push for your goal. Um, it's a lot of people, like you said, that don't have that support from their families or from their close friends. Um, I think with me believing it in myself, even if mm-hmm. I didn't have that support mm-hmm. that I did get from my family and from my brothers, I would still go after it. I mean, cause everything, like I set my mind to do, mm-hmm. um, I went after it and that was just because I wanted to, I wanted to do it. I and wanted to be a part of it. because you believe you can do it. And I believe that I can do it. So it was the passion behind me saying like, you know what? I love this particular thing. How can I be a part of it? Mm. I want to be a part of it. What do I have to do to be a part of this thing? Mm-hmm. And no matter if somebody said yay or nay, I mean, listen, growing up in Miami, we had a lot of people that was like, hey, you guys are not going to make it. Mm-hmm. You guys are too small. You guys are too short. You guys are this. You guys are that. Mm-hmm. And that comes with it, honestly. It does. Um, with everything that you do in life, you're going to have someone that doesn't believe in what you can possibly become. And that's when you just dig deep and, and use it as motivation to go after what you want. Trust me, this 18-year-old boy, whoever he is, mm-hmm. go after what you want. Put in, the, put in the time, put in the effort to what it is that you have to do mm-hmm. and manifest your dreams. Right? Manifest your dreams. Manifest that your is dreams. important. And um, most, I don't know if people know this, but you also have a son. Yes, I do. And so not only is he this awesome, talented person, <laughs> he's an amazing father. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, if you had to give... Um, if you had to give him one piece of advice for him to hold on for the rest of his life, right? Mm. Just one. What would that be? Go after what you believe in. Same thing. Doesn't matter if it's an 18-year-old. Doesn't matter yeah. if it's his, his yeah, own son, blood. He's, he's 13. My son's 13. Right. Um, so it's, it's a constant, you know, every day. Mm-hmm. I, I tell him, I'm like, I'm giving you an open book test. Mm. Are you going to... Are you going to get the answers from me or are you going to try to figure out for yourself? Mm. And it's important for him to realize that with everything that I've been through, with mm-hmm. everything that I've um, accomplished in my life, it's not added pressure on him to do what I've done or right. to accomplish what I've done. No way in form. Because he's in I'm football doing. too. He's in football. He loves it. Mm. You know, so it's not any added pressure on him. Mm-hmm. It's to let him know like it's possible. 
Mm-hmm. I did it. It's possible. Mm-hmm. So if you do X, Y, and Z, or you do these particular things to apply yourself, mm-hmm. then you can also accomplish that dream and accomplish that goal along with everything else that you want to become, you know, because mm-hmm. it doesn't just stop there. Like we spoke about, right. it's not always about the sport that you play. It's mm-hmm. not always about that one particular thing that you're doing. You're going to accomplish that goal. And then eventually it's going to be something else. You know, you're finding it within yourself, what your purpose really is. And you're going after it. That is so amazing. This has been such a great Thank you. interview. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sonoris, for Thank being you. here with Thank you us. Me. And if you can let the people know how they can keep in contact with you, follow you, any projects that you have oh, coming out. Yes, quite a few. <laughs> I actually, um, I have a uh, commercial that's out right now, Optimum Commercial. I play, I'm a commercial dad. Uh, I love it. Um, <laughs> it's actually playing right now all over. Um, I actually have another commercial that will be coming out later this fall. Um, maybe three different films. I have two short films, one called Fragmented, another film called Cancelled, and I have a Christmas film that will be coming out later this year called The Christmas Dance, where I play a doctor. So um, it's a lot of great things. I know it's quarantine. And I know it's a pan- pandemic going on right now. Um, but you can find me on Instagram at SonorisMoss.com, on Twitter at SonorisMoss.com, and enjoy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sonoris, for being here with us because I know that this interview, somebody is watching this and they're able to connect. And that's important because that's the point of this. This is why I created the Aya Show. So that way you guys can realize that it is possible, okay? Go after your dreams, man. This is important. Believe in yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought because at the end of the day, this is for you guys. And then also, don't forget that you can check out the Affirm Your Abundance podcast. New episodes launch every Monday through Friday, less than five minute episodes. And we'll see you next time on The Aya Show.